Hi folks and welcome back to another video. Today we are looking at the Matchbox Stuart in 176. Uh, this is a kit I have meant to put together for an awful long time and I just didn't have one and as I say it's very very rarely I actually purchase kits these days but about 12 months ago I spotted it and uh, picked it up and uh, how bad I'm uh, over the moon to actually be getting to a point where I'm putting this together now. This is going to be um, in a British tank battalion a reconnaissance element for uh, a battalion of Shermans for rapid fire purposes. I actually do already have one which was given to me a long time ago uh, but I've never actually made one so from that perspective I'm really looking forward to this. Um, of all the uh, matchbox um, armoured artwork kind of uh, examples this has to be my favourite. I actually love this particular uh, piece of artwork by Roy Huxley uh, representing a uh, uh, Stuart in um, British service in North Africa. So there you go. As I say, this box uh, was literally sealed up until a few moments ago. I just checked the contents to make sure there was nothing broken inside. So the cellophane is slightly open at the right hand side. But this is essentially an, an unboxing, as uh, other YouTubers tend to uh, tend to call them. So let's have a look at the rest, the rest of the box. So this boxing here, as you can see, it states made in Poland. Beneath that uh, sticker, there is a, uh, it does say uh, it's um, a, Re a Revel product, a Revel, uh, and obviously Matchbox in the, uh, the top right section there as well. So from that perspective, uh, it's in around that kind of transitional time period that this uh, this kit was manufactured, although it was uh, released pr prior to that, as far as I'm aware. Um, as you can see, Matchbox as per usual, they would have the image of the diorama uh, assembled at the back of the box, which is great. And as a kid, I used to love looking at those. And um, that's basically it. You have some various languages there, uh, French and Spanish and, Spanish and uh, Japanese and such. Um, the image there represents the uh, Eighth King's Royal Irish Hussars in uh, North Africa in 1941. Uh, although I will be uh, using it in British, uh, in British service, I won't be using those particular markings. I'll be using some old uh, spare Airfix uh, Sherman ones to match in with my British uh, Sherman tank battalion. But let's move on. So this side of the box shows us the uh, tank in American service uh, with the, I think it's 1st Armored Division in Tunisia and uh, gives us the uh, skill level of uh, skill level 3. On this side of the box, as you can see, another look at the uh, American variant on the right, such as the American uh, M3A1 of the cast turret had five machine guns, which must have been very cramped in such a small tank, and the British uh, M3 with the riveted uh, turret there on the left-hand side, they did away with the uh, at least two of the machine guns, um, just a little bit, as I say, crowded inside in that tank if you've got... Uh, nearly half a dozen uh, 30 caliber machine guns blazing away um and this was from the purple um the purple range shall we say in the uh, in, in the matchbox range and uh it is a two color kit as stated there Box ends repeat each end, and as you can see, it just states M3A1, honey. Uh, number is 40084, and uh, an image of the uh, tank on the uh, the cover there, and the end of the box too, and again, skill, uh, skill level 3. Front page of the instructions, again, just uh, usual details as they always did in the matchbox uh, range. So you'd have some information about the speed, um, kind of on road, cross country, armaments, etc, etc. And a little blurb about the tank itself in uh, various languages. So as the instructions fold out rather awkwardly for the light box, we'll have a look at uh, sections one to four first. Uh, a little bit of uh, information on the left hand side there first in the small print about painting and all the rest of it, what to cement together and what not and so on. Section one, as you can see there, is based on the lower hull and wheels. So very straightforward as I always say there. Section two is the tracks. Now it suggests uh, you know, that heating or not gluing it or whatever, I would be gluing those, I always do. That's just me. Uh, and then section three, applying the the, uh, the tracks to the actual uh, the, the wheels themselves. Section four, then uh, you have a turret for the Mark One, the Stuart Mark One, and you have a figure going in there, which we'll have a look at on the uh, sprue itself. But it looks very reminiscent of the uh, oops, of the Eighth Army um, Montgomery figure with just a set of binoculars added, added to his chest. You also get in your uh, 30 cal there, and as I say, the turret tickets put together, and that's basically that. Section 4A there again is the uh, the M3 version, so that's basically the, uh, the American version of it there. And as you can see, you have a few little extra bits and pieces of the shape of the hull, and um, then you again put your 30 cal at the back there if you so wish. 
So section five there, as you can see, there's a bit more going on. You're basically putting the kind of pre-assembled bits and pieces together there. So your turret uh, and the upper hull section is going in there. Um, yeah, that's all fairly straightforward. Again, I shouldn't imagine it's uh, going to cause too much problem. As I say, the fact that it is quite a small little piece, that's the only thing that would concern me with my big... Uh, with chubby fingers but other than that uh, i think it should be uh, straightforward enough section seven again you're setting a few bits and pieces there some tools uh, machine gun barrel and so on nothing too extravagant and in section eight then uh, for the short mark one there's a few uh, kind of stowage boxes going on there so that's uh, again fairly straightforward and uh, we'll see what we utilize there and uh, section eight then i just pull this over i suppose it's as easy section eight uh, shows us the uh, the m3 version again storage box is a little bit different They'll, they'll probably end up in the uh, spares box uh, spare gun barrels again always handy to have because i won't be using that particular format and then in the bottom section or bottom right corner it just kind of shows you how to put together the diorama and where to place the uh the figure which is again the uh advancing guy with the, the lee enfield uh what is that he has it's an smle mark three i think or mark three star with the uh the long bayonet he is taken from the uh matchbox eighth army range also Back of the instruction uh, manual there, uh, nicely neatly folded down, uh, it shows the various paints to use. These are um, Matchbox or Ravel paints, it says there. Now, I would always check online conversions and stuff like that. They do give the RAL numbers, which is great. Uh, so you've got RAL 7031, 10111019, 6028-1024, 5070-30. So from that perspective, that should be... Uh, Handy enough to uh, to find uh, most of those. Uh, and the RAL numbers is great. Uh, and again, a little bit of a painting instruction there um, on the uh, the bottom of it as well. So uh, here we have the uh, the decals uh, where the decals are applied. So number one is uh, for the uh, British version, which is um, straightforward enough. That's uh, North African service. And number two then is uh, for US service. Um, and I guess I say I won't be using either of these. They'll be going to the spares box, but uh, I may well use some of the American ones, especially that thing that says the witch on something else uh, in the near future. So uh, that's something to look out for. But I'm um, looking forward to getting this together. So uh, while we're here, let's have a look at the decals. So the decals seem pretty okay there. As I say, I won't be using them, but uh, they, did, they do seem to be in fairly good condition. And uh, they'll kind of covering kind of wax paper or whatever you call it, uh, tracing whatever tracing paper type thing. Um, seems to be in fairly good condition as well. So from that perspective, I'd say there's another few years left in those yet, and uh, they'll be in the spare box. And if I do need them, that's where they'll be. Okay, so first sprue. So as you can see there, you have parts of the diorama, kind of the little hillside or roadside ridge on either side of the sprue itself. You have uh, sections of the upper hull and section of the lower hull where the wheels will go on. Um, I'll show the other side of that sprue in a moment. It's bits of the turret, gun mounted, things like that. Uh, no flash, you know, absolutely pristine. As I say, it's literally only been opened uh, at this stage, what, 10 minutes ago? 15 minutes ago um so from that perspective um this hasn't seen the light of day since it was manufactured so it should uh, it should be in perfect condition have a look at the other side just to get some detail there on uh, the other bits and pieces particular the uh, the sides there where the wheels go to the kind of lower hull section um again as i say no flash visible i'm expecting this to go together relatively straightforward uh, famous last words but uh, as i say matchbox tend to be uh, fairly handy to put together in fairness to them second sprue there has the uh, road section on the right hand side as you can see uh, you have your various wheels bits and pieces there's gun barrels etc etc you can see the kind of 37 millimeter barrel there in the um, kind of center section there at the bottom um, and then you have the uh, 30 caliber uh, machine gun mount uh, just above it um, a few bits and pieces there there's your usual sort of rollers and all the bit all the rest of it is a shovel and so on and so forth and uh, you can see the rear of the figures there as well and the uh, the lower the, the the hull floor also so here I just wanted to have a quick look at the uh, the figures that come with it. As you can see, the guy on the right is advancing with the Lee Enfield rifle with the uh, the long bayonet, and he is, as I say, taken directly from the uh, the Matchbox One Seven Six Eighth Army uh, range, uh, which is a great little set actually. Uh, you can check out my video on that. Um, but the guy on the left then um, is looks to me as if he is taken from the uh, same range, um, but this guy is. Uh, 
is uh, adorned with a set of binoculars and the Montgomery figure or the figure representing Field Marshal Montgomery in the uh, aforementioned 176 Matchbox uh, 8th Army set um, is identical to this more or less. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting this guy in his turret and commanding this tank um, and uh, on the tabletop as soon as possible. So I'm going to crack on and get this together and we'll see how it goes and we'll be back to you very shortly. So I've returned to the uh, completed model. As you can see, it's painted in Humbrol Enamel 159 and it has the markings there on the turret uh, from the Airfix 176 scale Sherman uh, because that's the, uh, the markings I'm using for my rapid fire battalion. Uh, I did keep the little, um, little kind of the thing that says the witch on the side of it there, that little marking there. I thought it was quite cool, so I decided that it'd stick around. Uh, I used uh, Humbrol 113 on the tracks and just... Um, I think it was 67 or 66 possibly on the uh, the wheels and that just for the kind of the metal work and then um, just some Citadel, uh, what was that, Agrax Earth Shade I think it's called and some Null and Oil or that um, just as a bit of a wash over it. Uh, the figure in the top uh, was a little bit tall when put into the turret I thought myself so I trimmed the legs a small bit, took a couple of millimetres off him just to bring him down a small little bit uh, and uh, I mentioned earlier that I thought he was a kind of a a direct take from the uh, Matchbox 176 8th Army uh, set, but uh, seeing um, the figure uh, on the right hand side there, which is I suppose is uh, to represent Montgomery um, from that particular set, there is definitely a difference. The figure in the tank is actually larger, he's a more bulkier figure, uh, the face is a more definite sculpt, uh, there's a definite size difference by a couple of millimeters here and there, and um, you know, wrinkles in the, in the jumper he's wearing there, the, uh, the, the sweater, whatever you want to call it, uh, and the uh, the old the width of the, the V in the collar and stuff like that so not to mention the binoculars so it's not a direct uh, take from that set uh, whereas the guy running with the uh, the 303 and the bayonet uh, definitely was so uh, let's have a look at the uh, other side of the, uh, the figure again let's have a look at the, uh, the kit and let's have a little look and see how it turned out So looking head on towards the uh, the camera there, um, you can see it's a nice little model. It's you know it's, there's no markings in the front of it as such. You can see the two thirty cal machine guns. You can see the headlamps and the thirty seven millimeter gun, and again the figure in the uh, the turret, which of course you have the option of uh, displaying with the turret closed as well. From the other side there again, you can see uh, again it's a nice little figure figure and his little model as well so it looks quite nice and uh in fairness it was such a it was so easy to put together really to be honest there was no major issue fit and fit why fish fit and finish wise um so from that perspective i was quite happy uh the decals i was using were probably the only um the only problem both the uh the few that i used from the uh, matchbox kit itself that little number there in the bottom right hand corner on the hull there t262911 uh both that one and the one on the other side broke up a little bit the one that said the witch was okay and the uh, Airfix ones were a little bit dodgy as well, but they were kind of quite old, so you kind of expect that. Uh, I did find that the plastic was a tad brittle. Again, it might be to do with age. Uh, the gun barrel broke, uh, but that was about the only thing, really, to be perfectly honest. Um, I would say that the 30 cal machine gun mounted on the uh, the rear there for air defense or local defense it seems a little large, to be honest. I'll, I'll show you a Hasegawa um, uh, model of the same uh, the same tank in a moment, and you'll see the size difference. But uh, other than that, as I say, it's uh, quite a nice little kit. Rear of the vehicle there, as again, you can see, I used the uh, the Airfix uh, decal there, a little four and a triangle. Uh, again, yeah, at the back, you have some tools in place and you have uh, some uh, divisional markings as well. And uh, as I say, it's a very simple, straightforward little piece. And as I say, it's one that I've been meaning to do for quite a long time. I, I really do like it. I had one before, which I'll show you now as well in a moment, which I painted up in the same uh, in the same manner. And I've always loved the packaging on this. And as I say, this is the... The, uh, the the one and only one that I've put together myself, and I must say I really would recommend it if you can uh, if you can get hold of it. I don't believe the um, that Revel actually have the molds for this anymore. Um, they, they got them, but uh, I think it was damaged or something, uh, unfortunately. So you know they might be coming a little bit rarer out there. So there it is uh, with the other one that I have for many years. Um, it's nice to see the two of them together finally and paint it up uh, in that 159 colour. I think it's a good uh, colour for Allied tanks or the North... Uh the, uh, the Northern European uh, Theatre. Um, so from that perspective, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, these, of course, form uh, part of a reconnaissance uh, company for my Rapid Fire Battalion. So my Shermans, which are also 176 scale, will match in quite nicely with those. And we'll do a review on the uh, Airfix Sherman another day. 
I will say they are a little small at 176 in comparison to uh, the 172 Hasegawa that is there on the left. It's just for size comparison's sake. Uh, you might remember that's the uh, one of the Hasegawa tanks that I had from a video a good while back that uh, I just kind of primed them. But uh, they got uh, painted up the same night that the, uh, the Matchbox George got done. So, um, but what I will say is uh, the Hasegawa is also a nice kit, I must say, it, quite nice. Uh, but it is a proper 172 and as a result it is larger as you can see than its matchbox compatriot so as a result i wouldn't myself put the two of those into one battalion together it's not often that kind of thing would bother me but i think the size difference um i don't know how noticeable it is on camera there but uh in real life uh, here in my kitchen in the light box it is quite noticeable so i wouldn't uh table the two of those together myself into one unit but uh, both quite nice little models both I went together handily enough and uh, good representations of that particular vehicle just a rear comparison there for you just with the, uh, the Hasegawa on the left and again the Matchbox on the right uh, and as I say the uh, the 30 cal machine gun on the Matchbox one seems to be much bigger than the 30 cal represented on the Hasegawa but there you go that was the only uh, kind of little oddity I noticed in, uh, in, in the construction of both of those kits so there we have it that was my review on the matchbox m3 uh, or a1 honey um stuart basically in 176 scale i uh, must say again i keep repeating myself but uh one of my favorite pieces of artwork that a uh, little bit there by roy huxley uh, must say it is absolutely fantastic i don't know what it is about it i think it's just absolutely wonderful um and uh, that box is a definite keeper for me i'll uh, either uh, cut out the uh, the front of it or maybe just keep the box itself i don't know as i said previously i have notions about uh displaying the uh, artwork from these uh, these kits in some manner or form but that's another day's work but uh, as i say uh, if you like the video please do like and subscribe and share and all that business and hit the bell for notifications and all that kind of stuff uh, it'll be really great and much appreciated um so for at the moment i will say stay safe and we shall see you in the next video take care